Hi there. I'm Ryan Ellis, and I'm doing a video project on all that I've learned by 28. Now I'm going to talk about step seven in our 10-step process of building a company from startup to its first $1 million in sales. I'm going to talk about developing your product and taking it from an idea to prototype to reality. Let's first talk about the characteristics of a great product. A great product, one that's going to have great success in the marketplace and make an impact in the world, fulfills one, of the more, one or more of the following 12 key human desires. Let's take a look at those. You have human connection, making money, helping others, finding a partner, new experiences, safety and security, human expression, taking care of your family, learning and education, health and survival, impressing others, which is a, quite a powerful human desire, and comfort and relaxation. If your product can fulfill one of these 12 key human desires, you're well on your way. If it can fulfill one or more of these key human desires in a way that is substantially better than other products that attempt to do the same thing, you are well on your way to building a company from startup to a million dollars in sales. But first, you have to take that product and make it real. What else do great products do? Well, they bring joy and smiles to their users' faces because they're easy and they make a difference. Great products are often simple on the outside and powerful on the inside. Often the greatest beauty is in simplicity on the other side of sophistication. Great products have these eight characteristics. They fulfill one or more of the core human desires. They have at least a 4x markup over the current, over the production costs that are necessary to actually make that product and create supplies. They often have a recurring need where you can create a recurring revenue model. They're easily upsold and cross-sold, so you can sell complementary products or services that are tie in with those products. They're built to be strong and to withstand wear and tear, whether they be software that's built on a strong platform or a physical, tangible product that's built to withstand many years of use. They're beautifully designed and beautifully constructed. It's something that we see particularly in the Western world or particularly in developed countries where we are seeking higher and higher expressions of our Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We are finding that beautiful design is critical to market acceptance. You can see that at least uh, certainly with the Apple products. They're highly effective at achieving their stated purpose and importantly, they have a good brand, an easy to remember name. We'll talk more about branding during the next section on marketing. So what is product management? Product management is the process of defining what you're building in advance of building it, and then assembling the team, and then building that product. Now, product management is a, a profession that many people are employed with. You might see hundreds of product managers in a company like Google or Microsoft, maybe even thousands. And from my experience as a product manager slash CEO at iContact for the first few years and then uh, here at Connect Now as I co-build the Connect product with my co-founder Anima, is that there are two extremes in product development. There is the controller who is the maniacal dictator who says this is my vision and nothing else will be taken into consideration as I build this product. And then there is design by committee where there's no strong leader at all and all the decisions are made in a 10 or 15 or 20 person committee and at that age, at that stage, you often get very little innovation as you end up having the lowest common denominator and no real inspired thinking. And so the goal of a great product manager is to be at the right place in the spectrum between maniacal singular controlled vision and input from multiple stakeholders. So here's a spectrum of product managers and you might end up, you know, if you're not careful, with a, with a weak leader who ends up in design by committee hell with a very unfocused product. Or, on the other side, you might have a maniacal dictator which, has, which brings in too little perspective to create a great product. Where you really want to be as a product manager, as a product developer, is in what I call the green zone. Where you have strong, focused leadership and strong, focused vision, but you also take the time to incorporate feedback from the right people. Now, who are the right people? The right people are particular personas, particular examples of customers who may be using your future product, and select people within your organization that can really contribute to your ability to create a great product. 
but you have to keep those numbers few and keep your leadership and vision strong in order to end up with a truly innovative product. And so you want to be slightly right of center with product design and be a little bit closer to this maniacal side. It's better to have a strong vision and be slightly maniacal than be completely unsure about the product you're trying to build and the change you wish to create with it in the world. But you also want to have a little balance. So the next part of product management is understanding that a great product owner must be absolutely passionate. Just like in order to innovate, you have to be passion, passionate and that no innovation happens without passion. Great product development only happens when that person who is owning that product and seeing it through to reality is absolutely passionate about the change they wish to manifest in the world. When passion is lacking in products, a company's sales will go flat. When a CEO, when a leader is no longer passionate or perhaps is never passionate about the company's mission and purpose, the sales results and that company's profitability and stack price is going to go flat or go down. And I see as the leading indicator of a lack of success as a company is a lack of passion at the top and at the executive levels of a company. If you can build a company where the executives are passionate and the CEO and board and investors are passionate about the change they're trying to bring, you will see amazing shareholder return if you combine that passion with execution. And so it's important to define and understand your external personas that you listen to as you build your product. But what is a persona? A persona is an example person that simply you're modeling your product development after. And so if you're building, let's say, an email marketing product like we built at iContact, you would define four or five key personas. One of ours, we actually, you'd often give them names, and one of ours, um, we gave a name, and it was a small business owner who had maybe five or six employees and often tried to do the marketing himself or herself. And you want to understand the demographic and psychographic factors, and actually, if you can, give your personas human identities. And so as you develop as a team, you can say, well, Joe or Betty or Bob, these made up personas, would think about this as they're using the product based on their level of expertise. Let's talk about building great software. I have a lot to learn still about building great software, but I've had some great lessons in building up eye contact to 300 employees at one point having a 90 person tech team in the years past. And I found that from my experience, great software is built using a methodology called agile development where you're able to be responsive and reflexive to the customer needs and demands in the marketplace. You're able to release at least every two months, if not even, even every month or even every two weeks or in some companies every day. This is a departure from the prior methodology of product development called Waterfall, where you would write a very long product requirements document or PRD and then take six to nine to 12 months to come up with a new iteration of the product. It's also, agile development is also made possible by the internet where you can deploy software overnight in just a few minutes instead of having to ship a bunch of CDs. You also want to make sure your code is test driven and has quality assurance built in and automated throughout it. You want to do your programming in something called object oriented where you create templates and you're able to make these templates talk to each other rather than creating long different scripts, long scripts that are very complicated to be able to understand or bring new developers and engineers into. You also want a team, a development team that under commits and over delivers and factors in the time that's going to take for bug tracking, bug fixing and quality assurance and scalability and security. And finally, you want to make sure you have clear code that's easy for, to understand by new developers that you bring into a project and standards that anyone that's an uh, engineer can understand. These are some of the things I've learned about building great software. And these are some of the things I've learned about building great products. At the end of the day, to build great products, you must be passionate about that which you want your product to achieve and make sure it fulfills one or more of the 12 key human desires. Thanks for watching this section on product development.